Hello, everybody. It's Mary Lynn Harris of um, Hard at Work, and I am having a wonderful podcast conversation with uh, Laurel, Laura, and uh, I'm going to let her um, basically introduce herself in a minute. Um, and uh, so thank you, Laura, for joining us. And um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you kind of got started in doing what you're doing now. Oh, that's great. Uh, thank you so much, Mary Lynn. It's, it's great to be here. Uh, so as, as you said, you know, I'm Laura, Laura Staley. Mm -hmm. I'm founder of Cherish Your World, an author, speaker, passionately helping people thrive in their lives in a holistic transformation. And kind of what I mean by that is it's our hearts, it's shedding those limiting beliefs and looking at our physical space uh, through that, uh, that lens of, wow, am I really living in a space that inspires my inner world? And is the, in my inner world matching my outer space, <laughs> the outer right. space, not like outer space, <laughs> not, not the galaxies necessarily, yeah. <laughs> unless you want to fly to Mars, cool, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, you, you know, like the, literally, and, and right now, of course, you know, people are, are spending a great deal of time, and um, many people are, not everyone, um, in home spaces and having to use multi-purpose, you know, creating maybe a, a, a guest room as a place to do a podcast, which I'm actually doing right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a guest room, guest bedroom, because um, uh, it's the quietest room. Right. Uh, for for a podcast like this so right, as an example right right and uh you know and then creating you know supporting guiding people to create lives that they love living mm -hmm. right and yeah. and listening deeply to what sparks that in inside of them mm -hmm. and uh, how I came to this so my background is I earned a PhD in political science at yeah. the Ohio State University. We were just um, talking about that earlier, uh, which I'm so proud of. I taught for five years at my alma mater, Ohio Wesleyan University. I loved being an educator. And in many ways, I see myself as an educator, mm -hmm. uh, somebody willing to engage people and ask those rich, deep questions because the answers are inside of people. Yeah. People mostly know what's challenging them. They mostly know what uh, inspires them and what you know, gets them out of bed in the morning, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm there just kind of li deep listening and asking those meaningful questions of my clients or participants at a, at a workshop or in a talk um, to guide them. But how, how, how is it that I shifted to kind of, you know, feng shui and holistic transformation mm -hmm. uh, from political science? Well, I was a full-time mom after mm -hmm. teaching the college students, which I loved that it was such a it's the best thing I've ever done with my life energy to have two um, beautiful children and break the cycle of the way I had been raised. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of um, being a full-time parent, we had a flood. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> you know, of course you just, ah, you know, go through another challenge. And in the wake of that, I was with a, a, a family member at that time, mm -hmm. uh, now my former sister-in-law, and she just was so excited about this book and feng shui and I had never heard of it. I didn't, it, I didn't know what the word meant, you know, yeah. she's like, no, no, no. It's about your house and your life and, and making that connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had a beautiful home and I opened to the page, live with belongings you love. Yeah. And I was like, wait, wait, it's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and yet I was intrigued and walked back into my house, which is a ranch and looked around and saw hand-me-downs, hand-me-downs everywhere, Mary Lynn, that mm -hmm. I loathed. Yeah. And it was just like that moment of, oh my gosh, somebody, you know, Tara Catherine Collins in this wonderful book, you know, Western Guide to Feng Shui Room by Room, which became my Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Which became my resource, my guide, right? Right. Um, to, to living this new life. I, I, uh, I realized I looked at my life and I thought, wow, I've been living a hand-me-down life, meaning I love being a mom. I did yeah. choose that yeah. consciously. And I was, I'm, I'm still, you know, so proud of that choice, but I had been handed scripts, right? Mm -hmm. Other people's expectations, like, oh yeah. my gosh, 
my parents wanted me to be um, a, a senator. You know? yeah. <laughs> you know, they had they had their dreams for me, right? right. And expectations of the per perfect person I was supposed to be. Right. And and it was like, oh my gosh, I had you know put myself in in certain containers, and then it was reflected in my physical space. That's mm -hmm. what struck me so much. And so in that aha moment of, oh my gosh, I've, I've, uh, I've kind of lived this hand-me-down life. I, I found my voice. I found a passion for a lifetime. Um, I've since uh, you know, published three books that I'm so pr proud of. And, um, and, a, and an essay was included in a best-selling anthology. Uh, called uh, crappy to happy, and <laughs> I, just, yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah. and, and 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 that you know that moment was so pivotal in putting me on this uh, uh, this trajectory. That a maybe it's not about stuff, and if I have stuff, then have it be things that are useful, that mm -hmm. are supportive, and that actually inspire me. And I went on a search, mm -hmm. right? For the physical belongings, and I and I honestly didn't run out to you know Walmart or Target or you know a whole bunch of stores you know in this. I did the deeper work mm -hmm. of going, okay, who am I? What what uh, what is the artwork that I love? What are what's the clothing that feels good on my body? What are what are the what's the jewelry? Because because here's the thing, those hand me downs went deep. Oh my gosh, the clothing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it was clothing and jewelry. I, honest to God, like who the heck was I? Like someone <laughs> else was, you know, dressing and, you know, artworking, you know, my life, um, literally. And so it was so freeing. And I had already lost all these belongings in, in the finished basement, right? Mm -hmm. And the kids were little and, you know, we're navigating this whole challenging time period. And it just freed me to let go of that many more things, give my kids permission to not hold on to anything. Now, if they wanted a toy or whatever, I, I allowed them mm -hmm. their experience, which I think is really, really important. You know, like only do you right? Yeah. Don't, don't start messing with the belongings of other people in your <laughs> home, you know? Uh, and of course, if you've got a tiny baby, you know, make sure that what they've grabbed hold of is, is safe, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know safety proof that, that space. But, um, you know, you, that uh, there's plenty uh, for uh, us to do, uh, mm. each of us individually to, to clear, you know, cause I, I'll have that question, you know, uh, a lot of times, um, a spouse will be like, wow, can you come and help my spouse who's the clutter, you know, yeah. the clutter bug? And because I'm like this clean, neat person. But, but inevitably, they'll reveal that they've got the nightstand, that the drawers are all stuffed with things that they hadn't looked at in 10 years, <laughs> right? And, and they'll go, oh, okay, maybe I just start, start with me. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. that I, I hope that was that no, was a, a, long, a, answer to your, a long answer to your question, but I, no, I, no. I love I love helping I love guiding people, right. and I right. um, I don't see people as helpless. So I've really shifted my language around that. I really see it as guide support, um, you know, because I think each of us have that deep inner wisdom and knowing and experience of a, of a physical belonging, whether it irritates us or enlivens us or mm -hmm. has us grieve, you know? Right. Um, there's a lot of emotions associated with, you know, physical physical items, you know, like yeah. including that photograph behind me right. or, or the image that you chose behind you, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe even the earrings you're wearing, right? There right. could be a whole story associated with the things that we have the actual belongings that we do choose to have in our lives right um, yeah yeah well that's a very good um story and and it really encapsulates kind of what you do for people and why you got started right and yeah. i like i like that concept that you were saying is like check out your hand-me-downs or things that you've gotten and you've just taken because somebody gives it to you like you know, and why. So make sure that you, if you take something, it means something to you why you're taking it, not yeah. just because somebody gave it to you, right? Oh, oh that's, oh, spot on. Because it's, it's amazing how many stories I hear from people who they will inherit 
a piece of furniture or a belonging, maybe even from somebody who has passed on, mm-hmm. which of course, you know, my heart is w- with them in that, in that grief love space. And I, I too have, have lost people. I lost my parents, mm-hmm. um, you know, in, in 2019, 2020, just months apart from one another and boxes arrived, which I'm really grateful for mm-hmm. uh, memorabilia. So I've gone through those three, you know, I've done three waves already and it's a, it's a process. And, to, right. and as to your point, to ho- only hold on to even the inherited belongings that are meaningful to you. And mm-hmm. if you need to take a picture and then let that piece of furniture uh, go to somebody who would actually love it and use it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, just recently I heard about um, a fire where this family lost everything. This is ba- this was back in central Ohio. Mm-hmm. And a friend then reached out to her community and said, oh my gosh, this family lost everything. And it was so great because I love stories like this, um, Mary Lynn, and, and it's part of why I love what I do. But uh, there was, um, the, the family needed a, a large table. And there was another woman who, who you know, <laughs> all the connections, yeah. right? The yeah. person who went to them and said, and then she goes, oh my gosh, the, the person donating the table said, oh my gosh, I had a fire where I lost everything 10 years ago and I don't need this table. And I'm so blessed by all the people who stepped forward when I was going through my hard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, it easily let go of what was taking up space and didn't like uh, to support this this family, and then happened to mention, "Gosh, I'd love a drop leaf, <laughs> right?" <laughs> and, and the person that was doing the pickup actually said, "Well, you know what? I've got a drop leaf table that I don't use." Yeah. <laughs> so they just did, they did a swap, right? And so this, this this person went from you know letting go of something that they didn't like, didn't need, and it supported and was graciously received by this family that had you know lived through this trauma and 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 then received uh, the kind of you know drop leaf table that she she really wanted in her space right. you know? so yeah. it's like that yeah. it's like that. you know like can we free can we free ourselves right, right. To, right. to be in that in that flow of you know kind of receiving and generously uh, giving to others. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So can you give me some examples of some clients that you've worked with and kind of things that maybe you've helped them resolve or gone through? Oh my goodness. Well, know that I work confidentially. <laughs> no, you don't have to tell me your name. Just how you, just how you help them. Like, I don't but, expect you to give um, them their yeah, name. But. Right. Do, do, the, do the deep dive. Well, I, I, one client immediately comes to mind. That's such a great question who, uh, she really, she really wanted to manifest, um, you know, attract a, a, a love relationship. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, that, that it, she wasn't the first. Yeah. <laughs> but, and it's so interesting. Cause it, you know, and I, and I got to do this myself, right. Cause right. my marriage ended, but I still was, you know, did the deep healing, but I still was open to a healthy love relationship. So a both and right. I'm, yeah. I'm on the journey. She's on the journey, but we were looking around and she, and I helped her identify all the single images mm-hmm. in her space that, that, awesome anchoring her you know independence and her singlehood and you know that confidence and that self-love and self-compassion and self-worth all Mm -hmm. beautiful right but it's like the encouragement that I that I provided was to you know mix in images of pairs of things or Mm -hmm. a couple or do a collage of images of what a healthy love fit looks like to you right mm-hmm. and uh, uh and she had so much fun with that mm-hmm. and it turned out she had hidden some images and was able to pull those out of a out of a drawer out of a closet that happens to me a lot people often have hidden treasures in their space you know in that box that they've tucked away in the mm-hmm. back of the closet mm-hmm. and i'll get talking and just sharing generally ideas and they'll go, wait, wait, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like this, you know, and they'll go and they'll open a drawer or they'll open the closet and, and pull out this box. And, um, 
and find the exact item that they can't believe they've had hidden away, mm -hmm. but they're ready to have it out in their physical space, right? right. So taking down, so she, anyway, to make a, a long story longer, <laughs> it was exciting because she, she was so jazzed, she was so excited. She rearranged, she let go of a whole lot of things that were no longer serving her life. She did deep work in her heart and with her, those limiting beliefs mm -hmm. and did in fact, you know, manifest a, a, a beautiful uh, love relationship experience. And it was so exciting to, to, to hear from her and to know that, that she got to have that, that experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's not magical. You know, this isn't, this yeah. isn't Santa Claus feng shui, like, oh, you know, put the popcorn, <laughs> you know, there's a story of somebody like putting popcorn on the toilet and thinking checks were going to come in the mail. <laughs> no, you still have to like apply for the job, and, you know, yeah. like, you have to, like she still had to go, um, I, I don't remember, you know, like yeah. what online place that she went, but, but she still had to be engaged in and putting herself out there and letting right. her community know, I'm ready to date someone. I'm ready to fall in love. I, I want to have a love relationship. Right. So it wasn't that she just, you know, started hanging up images or putting pairs of things all over her physical space. It was like she was taking action in her life. Mm -hmm. So I encourage people to know that it's very, it can be very transformative work when you're doing the both and. Right. That it's not just, oh, I'm going to paint my front door red. Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> I get that question a lot too. Like, oh, does my front door? And I'm like, no, do you like red? And they're like, oh, so much, you know? And I'm like, well, then no, don't paint your front door red. Yeah. Um, you know, and yes, is red a, a fabulous color? Is it the fire element in, in this wisdom? Yes, yes, yes. But if it doesn't match your taste and preference mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of the, the energy, if you will, of the house, gosh, no, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a, um, so that, that's, that's, uh, one story I've had stories of people, you know, their husband got the job, they landed the job, they relocated, you know, just phenomenal results that people mm -hmm. have created in, in their lives. And it's been such a joy to, to hear back from them and go, oh my God, the quality of my life mm -hmm. has shifted for the better. Right. And it's, and it's a process and a practice, mm -hmm. right? Because there's always something coming in the door, right? <laughs> Either those inherited items or, okay, you've been clicking and shopping, you know, and no, no judgment, but wow, you know, is it now clutter in the corner right yeah. and just so to be kind to ourselves and go oh okay um i used it i had a great experience with that belonging but it, it's blocking the flow of 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 my life mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 it continues to be such a joy to yeah. work with people and and i will say this too mary lynn this wisdom has never failed me like there's a tool called the the bagua map and and it corresponds to domains of our lives mm -hmm. and have to be so there's so for instance there's a prosperity corner there's the love corner there's the right. career area in a physical space right mm -hmm. and and inevitably whatever is challenging them or rocking it out or something in between it's it's being represented in that physical space and it, it has not failed me mm -hmm. so the, the the people that i've worked with who have a rocking love relationship. You know, the the love area happens to just just happens to be <laughs> yeah. it often is their favorite room in the house. Right. right. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome place to start because you you already have the ability to create a space that inspires you and feels really good, plus a love relationship that's really working for you. Right. Okay. Let's have that spread to these other important domains of your life, whether it's career or creativity or travel right. or, um, pros you know, prosperity, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, because like for me, and I think for a lot of people in our culture, it's sort of like prosperity, love and career, you know, yeah. it's like a triangle, <laughs> not for everyone. Some yeah. people are really excited about travel or create creative expression and it may shift. Yeah. 
you know, as, as we go through life cycles, right? For, for me, creative expression is huge right now. Um, now, when I was parenting my kids, you know, uh, love and career, kind of building Cherisher World and family, right? Being a really healthy mom, as healthy as I could be to break those cycles from my past, that, that work was really, really important to me. The deep right. forgiveness work, the, the learning new ways to communicate with other people, right. uh, living in grace and mercy. Um, so each area has qualities um, that correspond to those domains of life. So for, for instance, career is about courage. Mm -hmm. really, like for me, right? Yeah. Having the courage to defy my, my parents, you know, expectations right. or even societal expectations of, right. wow, well, you, you need to be, you need to be out there in the workforce. Mm -hmm. Cause I, you know, like at the juncture that I was being a full-time parent was not popular. <laughs> it, was <laughs> like, it was not, not like the cool thing. It was not dope <laughs> at all. <laughs> right. And there I was with this deep passion to be a full-time parent, lucky enough, uh, fortunate enough to be in a situation that I could choose that and choose it wholeheartedly, make the sacrifice, live simply, mm -hmm. and you know, put my whole heart, mind, body, soul into being the healthiest mom I could I could be at that time. But mm -hmm. I knew that even when I was a little girl, you know, right. I wanted to grow up and be a mom. I just mm -hmm. knew that. <laughs> you know, and nobody, nobody could really talk me out of it as much as they <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you need to be running for office. You need to be, you know, out yeah. there being this academic. And I was like, nope, I, I want to be a full-time mom. So, yeah. 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 Oh, good yeah. for you. Good for I, you. Yeah. I think I, I often am giving people permission, yeah. you know, like writing them a permission slip. Like, yeah. yes, go do that thing that makes your heart sing. Right. Oh, right. so there's a little rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a parsing. laughs> so what kind what kind of clients do you like to work with the most? Uh, I think the people that, that are curious, that are receptive, that are already on the path, that uh, you know, they have a hunger, they have a yearning, they don't maybe they've gone through really hard, 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 and they know deep in their souls that, okay, this isn't it. Yeah. <laughs> all, this, all this mess and blah is, is just not it. And they, they, they want to take, they want to take the reins of their life and they have that passion and drive to take the actions that will make a difference. Mm -hmm. They want to clear the clutter. They right. don't want their life to be so out of balance. Right. And so like, Aha. Yeah. Uh, uh, and maybe, you know, I guess it's kind of like me for me, you know, <laughs> like anybody, <laughs> who's through, anybody who's lived through really, really hard things, right? Mm -hmm. No longer wants to keep repeating those cycles. Right. They want to pull out of the trauma. They want to pull out of the of the flood <laughs> or yeah. the sewage backup, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And 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 go forward, mm -hmm. but in a cycle. Right, because I think um, life is a is is, like is a, a flow. It's very cyclical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a flow. I, those are my favorite people yeah. to work with. You know, okay. they're excited. They're like feng shui. Ooh, I want to know about that. What is yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> they're, well, they're I think, curious. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of feng shui stuff is uh, popular, and unfortunately, we just learn bits and pieces of it, but we may not know how to apply it in our own lives, right? Right. You right. know, okay, if I do this, this that'll help me in this area. Okay, I could do a little bit here, but what else can I do? You know, kind of thing, you know, and perhaps the full service of a feng shui um, artist like yourself that might help people do the whole thing. And like you were saying, and the whole wheel of their life, not just pieces of it. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and they, and sometimes you just have to start one area, you know, yeah. one. I often tell people, you know, just one drawer at a time. Right. Uh, and, you know, and getting out of bed and doing this and this, yeah. you know, for two, what, how many seconds does this take? And this yeah. take to just, because now we know that these body postures, right, uh, you know, kind of rewire and yeah. the body and, you know, the wisdom and all of that and help you move 
forward incrementally. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and going back to the example of the people that, wow, they already had the rocking room. Well, so they had the tools, they had the wisdom inside of themselves, and it's just like moving it into the next room. Right. Um, and to be and to be gentle with ourselves. Uh, I know I tend to be this whirlwind. Like when I found out, oh my gosh, I was clearing and clearing and clearing. <laughs> you know, I'd already lost this stuff. And I, but that, but that's my personality. Yeah. You know, to kind of do a whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I know not everybody's there. So yeah. if each person can take it in incrementally and have that gentleness. And then sometimes the whoosh happens because, oh my gosh, you literally have the fire, right? Mm -hmm. Where, oh my gosh, I just, I mean, I just heard a speaker earlier today who, who shared about a fire, right? And, and everything she knew and had graduation ground from high school burned up, you know, mm -hmm. like it was like her whole past just gone, yeah. right? And it was all about, all about start starting from that moment going forward, but also hopefully healing, healing that trauma. Uh, so sometimes life circumstances hit us hard, but sometimes, um, well, like, like I think what a lot of people are living through now, right? right. A lot of change, a lot of who get on that, get on that surfboard, yeah. but, but to feel the volitional freedom that, oh, right. I can clear out this drawer, this junk drawer that has been agitating me and I can hardly open, yeah. <laughs> open it or, or the junk closet right yeah. to finally have at it and trust that the actions that you take to clear that junk closet or junk room or junk drawer is actually going to heal something inside your heart mm -hmm. and your mind and and it's huge and to, to, and be gentle with ourselves to do it in, incrementally mm -hmm. yeah another permission slip right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're such a driven culture, right? Yeah. You know, oh, you want to do it now and had it done, you know, yesterday. <laughs> well, it might have taken you 30 years to accumulate the belongings in your house. So right. it might take 30 years to declutter. I mean, hopefully not, but it might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see here so many people. I've got to junk. I got to clear out. And yet they just can't get there, you know, and so they'll hire somebody to go in there and do it and they do it, but it's just as junky as it was before. So I'm going, well, why bother? You know, so obviously there's some stuff like you were saying hidden underneath that you can't release it or you can't keep it the way you would like to have it, you know, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Well, and that, and that actually points to the deep inner work because if, mm -hmm. if the person generally wants the, the holistic transformation, mm -hmm. Uh, it's so important to do that deeper work mm -hmm. of asking yourself, why, why do I keep accumulating things in my space, even though I had somebody come in and clear it all out? Yeah. And I literally have heard those stories. Yeah. Like of people coming in and they cleared out the mom's, you know, place, and then they got her set up in a new place and then she filled it right back up. Well, okay. That's, that's something and her, and, and here's what I know, is clutter almost always is an expression of fear. Mm. The clutching, the gripping, the accumulating is, is often fear-based and the, and the person may, and it's something to consider, right? right? Anything I say today is just something to consider, right? right, <laughs> right? right. If it resonates, great. <laughs> if it doesn't, yeah. I'm, I'm not attached. But uh, what I've discovered in working with many people um, over these 20 years and myself, right? Mm -hmm. That clutter, clutters, all the different expressions are some form of, of holding on. And that holding on is about ultimately about, about fear and mm -hmm. not trusting that exactly what you need is gonna flow in mm -hmm. or that you'll be in a pers position to call a friend and say, hey, <laughs> I'd love a drop leaf dining room table. You know? <laughs> Do you have one? You know, and you know, reach out there and and ask. So as we so as we soften our hands and open our hearts mm -hmm. uh, to trust the flow and the the vulnerability of asking, mm -hmm. right? Or or of being generous with things. 
so that others have what they need and we have what we love and we can create experiences with one another. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a breathe easy or way to live because cl clutter can be really suffocating, right? Because right, right. it's, it's a, it, it just, you know, if you've got the house that's got the goat paths, you can, you, you know, your body isn't free mm -hmm. to move and flow uh, in that room. You're literally, you know, um, tightening up the body. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had so many people uh, say, oh my gosh, I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> right? They let go of clutter and they literally say, I feel like I, I have breathing room. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And, then to, and then to sustain that, to be yeah. discerning in what comes into your life, you know, right. what, what, you know, be a discerning shopper. Do I really, really need this? Right. Um, is this really um, support the quality of my life going forward? Right, yeah. right, right. Well, it's great conversation. I, I love hearing your stories and how you've been able to help people and some suggestions that you gave to people that they really need to consider consider uh, clearing out whatever is in their heart or whatever in their body, their, you know, yeah. wherever they love to be in. So I appreciate the conversation. Um, Laura, is there anything you want to say before we close off the call? Oh, uh, I guess just um, the permission, the permission to create a life you love living. A life is so short. So many people have passed on and, uh, you know, that ability to ground in what deeply inspires you about being alive. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if that is something that I could leave as, as part of, part of my legacy, yeah, it would be that, you know, a permission slip to truly uh, design a life that you want to live. Right. <laughs> Not according to somebody else's blah, blah. Right. <laughs> right. The one that's in, in your heart and that, you know, you know, um, brings you joy. And, yeah. uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So cool. So cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, thank, you Mary Lynn. thank you for joining me today. I so much appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure that, um, there'll be many people calling you. Oh, that would be think, great. <laughs> I think I think people are ready for that. What you what you're offering. So in closing, I'm going to just say, um, be kind to each other. Um, it's Mary Lynn of Hard at Work at Creating an Impactful Legacy Podcast Show, and thank you for joining me today. And I so appreciate uh, Laura that you came on today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. We'll talk to you all soon. <laughs>